this is me this is real this is authentic this is no makeup this is it's 2 a.m but i got stuff to say so <laughs> i'm actually embarrassed of how long i've been gone um but there's been a lot a lot a lot going on and i know like i post on social media all the time like not like i post on twitter and like snapchat and instagram and stuff but i haven't been mentally like ready to post on youtube i look a hot mess so I'm basically here to say like what's been going on with my life. Um, so I haven't really posted since 2019 and it's, we're three months into 2020 and here I am. Um, I have a sinus infection right now, so that's why I probably sound like horrible. But, uh, oh my God, where do I even start? Like literally it's been one thing after the other, but I'm here. So, it's taking a lot to be vulnerable, to be open, to be truthful about what's been going on with me, in my head, in my body, in my mind. I just said that twice. Um, so, I guess we can just backtrack to... Uh, August 2019. So that's when things like really started to like hit the fan for me. So as you guys may know, I was in a relationship for like three years. So that relationship like ended really badly. I'm not gonna go into detail cause I don't want people to like find him and attack him and whatever. It's not, it's whatever. Um, but like things ended horribly and I had my heart broken and I just felt like the world was like crashing in on me and I didn't know what to do. And I just, I had never been so like, felt so mad in my life. And I just wanted to like set things on fire. Like all the bears, all the letters and pictures we had. And like, like I had a phone case of a picture of us. I broke it in half. Um, I ripped up all of our pictures like I was that mad and it took a lot to get over like it was it was hard for me because I did so much in those three years to where I felt like I was disrespected and my time was wasted and yeah so that was that that was the first thing and then like the worst thing possible happened to me in December actually on Christmas Eve so so that's why I didn't post for like the rest of 2019 because I was like trying to get over that like heartbreak because it really really like it was it was it was really rough and it's something like I don't wish on my worst enemy and yeah so then December mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm so tired. Um, but I felt like like something I couldn't sleep without making this video. I felt um I mean December twenty fourth, Christmas Eve. <laughs> I lost my baby, my son, um, Miller, the fat one, the fat dog. Um oh my god, that was literally like the worst thing the worst pain I had ever felt in my entire life. And it's still like, it hurts. Three months later, it's still like, what do I, like I'm still lost. And it's still like, what do I do without my baby? Like that was my, that was my baby. Like that wasn't a dog, that was my son. It, he would go on rides with me he would like we did everything like we would eat cheese together we would watch spongebob together like that was my baby and a woman was speeding and not paying attention and she hit him and killed him 
and like that day just replays in my head over and over again like just just the realization that he will he's not there every time i come home from like work or school or wherever and he's just not there it's hard to process and um so yeah so that was another thing that like set me back 15 million steps that was like the worst thing and then um in january i thought things were turning around because i got a new car i got my dream car i got a 2017 Volkswagen Beetle. It's green, it's beautiful. I got my dream car and I was like, oh my God, maybe things are like looking up for me. And I also got promoted at my job to assistant manager, but I'm also working a lot more, which is making me really like tired. Like I am going to school full time and I'm working full time. So it's like a lot on me and i never had off days um i never like had time for myself to even breathe because i would also babysit and i'd also do this for somebody and i'd go here for somebody or i'd do this with somebody and it was like i never had a chance to breathe and just like sit and just, huh. I never, I never did that. And so in February, um, I got into a car wreck in my new car. <laughs> um, a lady hit me when I was stopped at a yield sign. Um, she wasn't paying attention and she ran to the back of me and I had some injury to my neck. Did I say that right? I had a, I'm having, I had some neck pain <laughs> and I was on like three different pills and I was like falling asleep at work. Like I couldn't even do it. I was like, like that embarrassing, like, like nodding off kind of sleep. Um, because of the pain pills and I didn't want to take them because I couldn't function but I wanted to take them because I was in pain so it was like oh my god what what do I do and so after that wreck <laughs> so um the lord jesus christ so this is like the hard part um so I kind of almost died, <laughs> um, like all jokes aside, it's not funny. It's actually really concerning and um, really scary that I got to that point to where I was almost like in a coma. So that's like aside from the car wreck. So um, today is Saturday, um, so Sunday, last, last week. Sunday. Um, I felt sick all day at work. I just felt like I couldn't even do it. Like I had a sinus, and like I felt like, you know, the regular cold symptoms, but it was like really, really intense. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm getting sick. Dang, like I can't even do this right now. Like I had to work all day. And so I remember um, my family was having like a bowling night and they were like, oh, uh, stop by after you get off. And I was like mad. I was like, oh, I've been working all day and I don't feel well. And I just want to go home and lay down and take some night quill and go to bed. And I was mad, but I went anyway. And everybody was like, are you okay? You look tired. You look, you look sick. Are you good? And I was like, yeah, I'm just sick. I'm just tired. I, I've been working all day, whatever, whatever. And my body was telling me one thing, but I was telling my body another thing. I was like, no, you're fine. But my body was like, no, you're not. You need to like slow it down. So that night, I just remember I couldn't breathe. 
Like I kept drinking water. Like all I wanted to do was drink water. And I could not breathe. Like I was breathing like, <laughs> like I could not breathe at all. And it was very scary. And my mom was like, okay, we're going to the ER. Come on, we're going to the ER. And that's all I remember. And I remember like I kind of, I feel like I blacked out a little bit. And then I woke up in a hospital bed in the ER. And I remember they're like, do you know your name? Do you know where you are? Blah, blah, blah. I was like, what? Like, yeah, I know my name. My name's Rayleigh. Like, I, and they were like, do you know where you are? I'm like, I'm in the hospital, I guess. <laughs> like, it looked like a hospital room. I guess I'm in the hospital. So, um, and I remember laying in the bed and they were just like poking me with IVs and needles and all this. And all I wanted was some ice water. Like I was just so thirsty and they were like, no, you can't have anything to drink. And I was like, oh my God, I'm dying. And so, um, I guess I like fell asleep and then I woke up and I was in the ICU. Um, so I, oh my God. It's a hard thing to accept, but I have type one diabetes. I've had it since I was nine and I hate it. <laughs> I always, that's my, my biggest issue was I didn't want to accept it. And it's taken me this long to accept like, hey, you have this condition and you need to be proud of it and you need to take care of yourself or you're gonna either have complications or you're gonna die. Like that's, that's what's gonna happen. If you don't s smarten up and stop like being so stupid <laughs> like basically and so i went into a thing called dka which is diabetic ketoacidosis and basically that's very bad <laughs> um so your blood sugars are supposed to be like under 150 they're not supposed to be over a thousand and I guess when I went to the hospital, my blood sugar was like over a thousand and that's like not good. <laughs> Anybody can tell that's not good. So yeah, so I was like very close to being in a coma. I was very close to being on a ventilator, which is like a breathing tube. Um, and it's hard to hear that that stuff almost happened to me. And I thank God. Oh, there's a God. I thank him so much that things were not worse because I could have still been in the hospital right now. Like I could have been in a in a casket right now, to be honest. Um and the reason why I even got to that point is because I gave up on myself. I was so, there was just so much going on and I was feeling sorry for myself. I was like, I'm 21 years old and I have this disease and I just want people, I just want to be normal like people. Like I don't want to have to prick my finger every time I eat. Like I just want to eat. Like I don't want to have to do that. I don't want to have to stick myself with an insulin shot every time I eat. I don't want to do that. I want to just be normal like other people and blah, blah, blah. And that's how I've, that's been my mindset growing up in school because I used to have the insulin pump. I used to wear it on my side in elementary school. And people would be like, is that a pager? Is that a beeper? Um, oh my God, are you a robot? Like, like people would ask me questions like that and it made me sad because it made me feel like I wasn't normal like I was weird like I had a problem and so 
being in the hospital was a very, very big eye opener. And like, I just appreciate life and food so much more because hospital food is disgusting. Um, like every meal I eat, I'm like, yes, thank you, God. Um, it's not good. And I'm mad at myself that it even got to that point. But I, it, 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 it's a, it's a thing that you kind of feel alone. And I felt very alone in my situation. And it, it's hard to talk to other people about it. And, but now I'm like, I'm 21 years old, I'm, I'm grown. I need to be smart and take care of myself because I realized that it was very selfish of me to not take care of myself because all the people that um, checked on me and have been saying nice things and sending me flowers and balloons and text messages, like, I think the biggest thing that really, like, opened my eyes was seeing my mom, like, break down and cry. And I don't know if she, like, realized it, but, like, I saw her and I heard her when I was in the hospital. And hearing her tell other people like like her fears losing me and stuff like that like and, and i'm mad at myself because how could i be so selfish into like like not taking care of myself that affects other people and i don't know it just makes me feel i just want to apologize to anybody that I affected by not taking care of myself um, because there's a lot of people that actually do care and and these situations do open your eyes so you can see that people actually do care and um, it's not like I was suicidal or anything I just like gave up on myself and I was like well whatever whatever happens happens but being in the hospital, being stuck with like needles every four hours. I had an IV in this arm. It was right here for two days and it hurt so bad. And then they moved it right here on the third day. And then they stuck me in this same place about well, every four hours for like two days to get to draw blood. They stuck me in my, up here, that still kind of hurts and it's sore. I don't have feeling in this arm right now because they just stuck me so many times. And uh, I don't know what they did, but there was one thing that they did that hurt so bad I don't know if any of you out there have ever had a catheter inserted the the thing where you like they put a tube and you pee and it goes into the little bag yeah that shit hurt <laughs> bad and it was uncomfortable and i just wanted to like get up and pee i didn't move for like two days so my back was like on fire and it still is like i just need a full body massage right now like and it's like my body is still hurting from my wreck too so it's like mm, i'm just a little rough right now <laughs> i will say life's been tough but i'm here i'm alive and this is god telling me hey like i'm giving you this second chance do good with it and I made a promise to my mom and I made a promise to myself that from, from that day forward, when I was actually conscious in the hospital, that I was gonna take care of myself and 
I'm just gonna be a better me. And that's the road I'm on. Things don't happen overnight, but I'm getting there. Like I'm working on myself. Um, my blood sugars have been really good in the past few days. So I think a scary thing was like, you know, getting out of the hospital and like being on my own. And um, cause I was scared. I've been scared of like relapsing, you know, like, like eating and then not taking insulin or something like that. Um, but I've been doing good. And I think that I just, every time I just need to think about, you know, laying in the hospital bed and getting stuck and like what can happen in the future if I don't take care of myself. And so that's really like scared me straight. And I'm really, I'm really thankful for that experience because it really like, it opens your eyes and it, it, it makes you smarter. I want to be better. I want to, like, I want to be better and do better. I want to. So that was my little spiel of what the hell has been going on in my world. Um, yeah. I think that's pretty much all I have to say. Um, I miss the camera. I miss editing, I miss everything. And hopefully this, my stomach just oinked. I don't know if y'all heard that, but it said <laughs> Hopefully this could be the start of me getting back on track. Um, because I did think of just like quitting YouTube all in all, but I thought that maybe taking a break take a break and then coming back when I actually actually am ready to come back and not just thinking like thinking like oh well I'm gonna lose subscribers if I don't post like right now because I've done a lot of like things with other people's like interests or whatever in mind and not my own so I think I'm ready. I think I'm ready to dive back in there. Um, so yeah, this is me. Um, a better me. I just gotta get over my sinus infection. And we, uh, excuse me. It's not a red Lexus video if I don't burp. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I'm about to go to bed because my friend is graduating in the morning and I have to get up at 8 a.m. And yes, and it's like 2 a.m. So I gotta go. But I love you guys. Um, and I've missed you. And I'm not wearing pants. Okay, bye.